Welcome to Solutions Rising. I'm Rachel Branch, and I am honored, really honored, to welcome five Bard Micro College graduates to our program today. And it is an honor, once again, as always, to welcome Professor Gloria Caballero Roca as co-host. Dr. Caballero Roca has brought great educational credentials as gifts to the students at Bard Micro College. With us to share topics of serious and timely importance are the following beautiful, brilliant human beings. And I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves. And we will be, they will use whatever they describe themselves as by their title. And I will start with you. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm Amy Hendrickson. Hello, I'm Jasmine Smith. Greetings, I'm Leori Blanchard. Hi, I'm Adriana Torres. Peace, I'm Janaea Collins. Ashe to everybody, Gloria Caballero. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Dr. Gloria Caballero Roca and I will be uh, offering questions and comments as appropriate, and Janaea Collins will be helping with some of the follow up comments. Each of these incredible women have a topic, and we're going to start with maybe a couple of minutes, like maybe three minutes to discuss, and I'm going to start with Amy Hendrickson, and she's going to tell us what topic she picked and describe it, and then we will all join in. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, was, I was able to choose free education and how it's so important to, especially women, I feel like. Um, I met these wonderful human beings at Bard Micro College, and that is actually a free liberal arts um, associate's degree, absolutely free. Um, it provides us books, tuition, experience, life experience, sisterhood. Um, to me, it's more than an education. Um, it's a life experience. Mm -hmm. um, but in like, if you Google, you know, what free, ge free education is, it's, you know, just, it gains access to grants, higher education in classes. Um, and class is a huge issue. We're, we are all women of different types of backgrounds and classes, um, and we met in a horrible time when the world shut down during a global pandemic. So I received not just an education, um, and I'm meeting great professors like you and Professor Roca, um, but I gained sisters mm -hmm. and um, how did you find out about this program? So how did I, I found out about um, Bar, Bard uh, Micro College from a caseworker, uh, the DTA caseworker. I actually, my family and I, we moved from the Boston area because we were homeless. And um, my caseworker um, from Wayfinders, she, she just gave me the, the flyer. And it wasn't really, oh, you should do this. It wasn't really encouragement. Um, but when I did get the guts to apply, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an older woman, so I didn't, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I'm a mom, a wife, mm -hmm. my life is over. Um, but then the pandemic happened and my life started, mm -hmm. essentially. And I met my sisters, my girls, and mm -hmm. um, just because my, the caseworker gave me that paper, Yes, she did give me the paper, but I gained my life. I, ga I gained who I want to be. I, I became Amy, and mm -hmm. it's because of free education. Um, what courses have you taken or did you take that really affected you as a woman, as a human being, uh, raised some consciousness about, uh, you know, about the world that surrounds you? Um, we all studied humanities and sociology. Um, but professor, I'm not just saying this because you're on TV right next to me, but your, pro your classes, your feminine class and your intro to Latinx um, showed me 
who I am and what I be can can become as a woman, um, as a low income woman, as a mom. Um, it just provided me that strength and the way you taught us was just so easy and so graceful it was beautiful and um, I don't know how much I can thank you but I'm gonna thank you until forever <laughs> because you you have provided a spark in us I think um, Bard in general have wonderful professors oh yeah you know and it's a community of people that are out there that get it yes mm -hmm. because we've been through the grinds too yeah. mm -hmm. and this is for you to just look at each other and look at us and say okay now this person is talking from their heart mm -hmm. or he really gets or she really gets what i feel and the fact that you guys have at, at your disposal you know this <laughs> this group of people you know makes higher education that is free and i should take away the word low income because the topics that you guys talk about, the freedom that you have to create, mm -hmm. you know, it's only it's not only for low income, it's for everybody, everybody. who dares yes. to transgress the academia the way it is. Mm -hmm. That's becoming more and more corporatized. Yes. You know. So I think we should give credits to, to the to the entire program. Oh yeah. The Bard yes. the yeah. support is mm -hmm. top notch. Because mm -hmm. we talked about this in criminal justice class on Wednesday a lot of us didn't have support. Yeah, we didn't have cheerleaders sure. growing up. Yeah. And now we collectively become a group of mature people focused on doing what's right in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what the, um, puts far apart from other colleges and academia. Previous higher education experience, I didn't have that, that support. Mm -hmm you know, compared to now, mm -hmm. and I'm able to get to where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. If a lot of other universities and colleges, you know, got in line and took up Bard's mood, we have a, a lot of wonderful yeah, movement. Yeah, it would absolutely. Be able to mm -hmm. Definitely. The, the Bard tagline, like if you go onto the Bard website, is a place to think, mm. Mm. right? Ooh. And like, I'm going to speak for myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like because of the world that we live in and my own personal experience, um, though I unabashedly consider myself brilliant, mm -hmm. I have not had enough opportunity to simply think. Yeah. Right? Just moving and pushing and grinding and hustling all the time precludes you from being able to breathe long enough to just think yeah, and right. the beauty of the fact that bard is free yeah. period mm -hmm. yeah. yes and it, thinking and reflection just, are so important yes in free life. we yeah. can just think, think. Mm -hmm. we can go into that space and we can have our minds ripped open and filled up and sewn up and just like go out into the world and give it everything that we have yes. yeah mm, and yeah. it's like it's just really really amazing and you know moving forward right like i feel really blessed like i'm going into another place where it's like tuition is free mm -hmm. right and that's amazing and i'm going into this amazing program at this wonderful school um francis perkins yay <laughs> um, <laughs> but um i'm starting to feel a little of that pressure mm -hmm. of the lack of free period yes right and i wonder how i will be able to engage moving forward without the free mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you yeah. uh, because of what amy just said i want to go next to liori lancher because liori is going to talk about housing and homelessness and i'm sure s some of us have been there on um or been very close to being there, so I will let you take the microphone, please. Oh, gratitude. <laughs> so, if you guys are, have not been aware, there are over 20,000 people in Massachusetts that are homeless. Let that sink for a moment. And this was a finding from 2018, so what do you think? Oh, the oh. numbers <laughs> went up. Way up. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Especially since COVID. Mm -hmm. oh. 
exactly. So we have uh, factors. What do we have? Section 8, long Section 8 waiting list, mm -hmm. long localized waiting list, overcrowded homeless shelters, um, not enough homeless prevention, and the people that are supposed to be handling homeless prevention are not quite doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then you have food insecurities, inadequate wages, affordable childcare, all these factors play into homelessness, believe it or not. And one of the things that get me are the way that people with mental health and addiction, how they keep going in the revolving door of homelessness. Mm -hmm. We have elders living in cars, elders, elders. So I have more of a question. How, how do we get all the housing organizations on the same page? Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I can think of to answer that question, then I'll give the floor to you guys, is we get a committee, a committee of the people, mm -hmm. a committee like us of the people to oversee what Holyoke Housing is doing, mm -hmm. to oversee what Wayfinders is doing. And then, and then give them a report and say, hey, you're doing good, or hey, no, you're not doing good, you're doing bad. Mm -hmm. And these are what we think that can happen. These implementations can, can help further us along. But that was my question. How do we get all the housing organizations on the same page because of the homelessness that we're dealing with right now? D going to say decriminalization of the process, but that isn't quite the language that I want to use. Um, I have not myself dealt with being houseless. Praise be. And also, I have witnessed the people who I love the most in the world going through houselessness, mm -hmm. right? And the list of things to do and the rules that you have to follow and the rules that, you know, the, the checklist of things that will prevent you from being able to access housing. Mm -hmm. Like just mm -hmm. a place with four walls so you don't die of the elements, right, is so exclusionary mm -hmm. and makes it really, really hard. Like you can't be an active drug user and access Wayfounder, Wayfinders and Holyoke Housing they're going to tell you to go to a shelter. Mm -hmm. And if you're high, you can't go to the shelter. They're not letting you in the doors. Someone's addiction should not mean that they deserve to die in the street. That's very mm -hmm. true. Addiction is an illness. It is an illness. And I really would like Amy to speak to this because mm -hmm. Amy has been homeless. And I've been threatened with eviction, which might surprise some of you. So this is very, very frightening. But I really would like it if you would speak to this, if that's all right. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and how I, did you get out of it how also? How did I get out of it? Um, well, let's see. Um, how did it happen? I, we were in the Boston area. So Boston is extremely expensive. Um, I just couldn't afford it anymore. Even though I worked 40 hours, I had a really good job, I just still couldn't afford it. Um, my pastor actually told me to come here to Springfield, and he said, you can stay at my place, and we'll get you, um, I'll be your landlord, and we'll get you something called home base. It's like a voucher for six months. Um, and me, even, funny to say, I when I was in Salem, New Hampshire, I was a leasing consultant, so I knew about housing and, and um, vouchers. And I looked it up about home base, and I said, my, my boys are not old enough to have a non de leaded house. So I told my pastor, I said, this is not gonna work. I'm not gonna be able to get the voucher because your house is old and it will it might have lead in it they need that d-lead mm -hmm. certificate so that didn't work i told them but you know how men are <laughs> they don't really listen at the time so many um so he said silly amy we'll, we'll work it out and so it didn't work out it didn't work in our favor so we packed up and i went to chicopee motel six with three children 
um, in the summertime. <laughs> and um, so we lived in Chicopee Motel for a month. Um, and then I went to the DTA office because I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. So I went to the DTA office and I did not have a physical address. So mm -hmm. the town of Chicopee found out that I was living in a hotel with my children. And so they said, you need to leave. So I finally <sighs> went into, I went, stayed hours at the DTA office. They actually told me I did not look homeless. Um, th Why? This was this. Why? I don't know. I'm. I don't know. I. I. I don't know what a homeless person looks like because I was homeless, so I can't judge a book by its cover. Because what? Because I'm a white woman that's kind of dressed okay. I need to dress okay because then I'll be depressed. So I need to look the. Uh, that's that. That what makes me motivated. You know, get getting dressed up and looking okay. Um, it's attack the victim. Yep, exactly. Yes. So she said, I don't look homeless. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. So I called the supervisor because I was like, that's bull crap. Um, they finally got me into same thing. I, funny, I went into a Motel 6 at Holyoke. That was a <laughs> family shelter. Um, and then I just busted my butt. I walked every day and found apartments, asked for applications. And and that's where I'm at. You know, I finally I got an apartment. I established um, housing. I did. A I was able to receive that home base um, voucher. It's only for three months, but because of the pandemic hit, thank God the pandemic hit because I did not have a job. I was still homeless, um, so that the the fund still obtained to help me out. You know, to keep me above water, but. Being homeless is not fun, especially with oh, it's terrifying. Three children. I can't it even is, imagine it, is, it with three it children. No. So if I may interject, yep. Amy, how long would you say? What was the time frame of going through all of that before you finally got stable again with three children? Probably about eight months. Hmm. Oh my God! But it's footwork. You know, you have to because the the DTA and your caseworker, you're just a case number. Mm -hmm. You're just yep. a file number. Um, so I worked hard and I hustled and I did it. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, I see all these houses, abandoned houses in Springfield. Mm -hmm. Then my little brain clicks and I'm like, why can't Wayfinders, why can't Section 8, why can't they, they got all the money. why can't they collect and help out families mm -hmm. and move them into like a habitat of humanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Habitat yeah. for rehabilitation. Uh, we need that. Yeah. And we need, we, there are so many, we don't, they're, they're saying across the United States, you know, we need new si single family homes. We don't. We need, mm -hmm. I believe, cooperative yes. arrangements so that homes that are empty can be rehabilitated and uh, formerly homeless individuals can become part yes, of their community absolutely. by through ownership. Yes. And if you have a cooperative home, Everybody's contributing, um, and then maybe if you turn it into a duplex, you can find, wind well, up yep. with income. You had the wherewithal and the background because of your leasing experience yes. to know how to at least navigate. Yes. Uh, the, uh, uh, in my own experience, and I'm mm -hmm. sure a lot of you, the, um, the paperwork. It's is ridiculous. Is, is the paperwork. They want there everything. are so yeah. many people that are being denied and that God are deserving. Yeah. And God forbid if you're undocumented, too mm -hmm. they oh, will yeah. just throw you out the mm -hmm. out of the blue too and um, if i may yes but that's what happens when housing instead of being a human right mm -hmm. becomes a commodity mm -hmm. you know and if it's a commodity you have to be able to provide and pay or when housing is being um bought by corporations mm -hmm. here in holyoke I think it's 60% of people are renting, and uh, many of those houses are owned by corporations. Yep. There's not a landlord. Who do you <laughs> talk to? You know, who d are you complaining to? That mm -hmm. part, there's a void there. That's why here in, in Holio, they're organizing tenants, a tenants union, mm -hmm. you know, so that they can uh, speak up and get together and organize and mobilize. And that's why they're doing a lot of campaign around housing. It's your right. 
and you have to find those uh, lawyers that are willing to work for you know pro bono, pro bono. Mm -hmm. you know, and teach you and guide you about your rights, your human rights. Yes. It's a human right, it is a human not right. a commodity. The Not other side of that coin, though, to be very careful of is if you do get involved and you're a person who needs housing, you have to be very careful of retaliation. Yes. yes. And, th and if yes. you are evicted yes. and they find a way to push you out yeah. and you don't have any legal access, mm -hmm. it is a horror show because then they can use that again as a retaliation to sure. deny you housing mm -hmm. as if you had done something wrong mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they wanted to get rid of mm -hmm. you. Yes. So, and I guess we need to fight for rent control here in, ho in Massachusetts. It's mm -hmm. illegal, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. They can take, you know, um, that rent and uh, do whatever with them. It is illegal to have rent control, and people don't know about all the regulations that are illegal. And what can we do? Well, we should push our representatives. We should really vote them out. You should run for those positions because you have the lived experiences. Mm -hmm. And we should advocate for ourselves. Yeah. Do we yeah. cannot wait for them to do, mm -hmm. you know, what they're th they're supposed to do. We elect them, and then they say, "Well, you need to keep pushing me." No, you yeah. know the the problem. Right. It's mm -hmm. your job. You mm -hmm. do your job because we're doing ours. Absolutely. Go out, run, vote, vote them out. You know, organize. And I keep mm -hmm. saying the same thing because the personal is political. It is political. Yeah, that's why I say. And I leading from the yeah. the housing, I want to go right into Adriana, connecting that to healthcare, and I know that's the topic you are going to speak about. Adriana yes. Torres, please. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, my topic focuses focuses on healthcare needs and lack of services and hospital beds, but ultimately, um, if I would choose my own topic, I would go into um, sex education. Mm -hmm. I feel like as it's very important because um, yeah. mm -hmm. children start first. It starts with children. So I feel like if um, and also if we keep allowing our, allowing our children to learn from a white man's history, we nothing will change. Mm. So <coughs> sorry, my throat. Okay. So I feel like anything that's not nonprofit is profiting. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. healthcare industry faces demanding conditions in 2003, including a lot of pressure continuing high inflammation rates, labor shortage, and COVID-19, you know, COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the divide and conquer, it's not really, how do I say? You'll think of it, and of course, COVID-19 had a huge effect on, mm -hmm. on health care. And one of the things I learned, we lost our hospital in North Adams, was that I didn't know that health hospitals had um, investment entity entities as part of their um, systems. Mm -hmm. Hospitals uh, are supposed to be nonprofit, mm -hmm. and there are all mm -hmm. kinds of, again, yeah. paperwork and rules and regulations yep. that keep you from having mm -hmm. access, particularly the most vulnerable, mm -hmm. for addictions and mental health and uh, if women, um, pregnant women. So I'll let you go from there, Adriana. It starts with homelessness as well, like, like, Absolutely. You, like you mentioned too, like um, it just doesn't make sense to me how healthcare only applies to certain people in this mm -hmm. country and how the rest are suffering because um, you know they don't have an address or no mm -hmm. ID or not able mm -hmm. to because they're undocumented. This affects like the whole community of people. Yes, don't like you love it that they call human beings undocumented? Mm -hmm. human beings mm -hmm. and I think recently I just heard at a um, conference a man who went out in the street and helped someone who had never had health care he said when's the last time you saw a doctor and the man said I've never, seen, never a seen a doctor mm -hmm. and he filled out that paperwork filled out there are people that are on the streets that have no idea that they have rights and these yep. are rights these are universal rights mm -hmm. yeah and that this is Again, the United States of America. Mm -hmm. This is insanity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, Professor. No, did I, was I just, interrupt? I'm you? interested about yeah. <laughs> what um, Adriana wants. Yeah, to. and like I just feel like when people um, have an illness or they develop a disease from being ill, they have to depend on that now. That's this one of the responsibilities now, and it's something that's uncontrollable. We can't prevent it. We can't stop it. We can't ask why. It just happens, and so when we go to hospitals, sometimes you know, hospitals um, they lack. Um, beds, they do. They don't have enough. Um, they only have enough for the ICU rooms, 
and those don't apply to the CCU beds. Mm -hmm. What are CCU, Adriana? Um, I put on quotations. I didn't really critical mm -hmm. care critical care, care units. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But the U.S. has an uh, abundance of medical and surgical beds and too few intensive care unit ICU beds, likely because the ICU beds are often unprofitable, unprof and a fee for service scheme. Our overall oversupply of beds believes the fact that we have less than half of the IC I ICU and mm -hmm. critical care unit mm -hmm. CCU beds that we need in 2030. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2030. Yep. Yes. And um, I mean, simply just to have enough because the other half of the people don't have health care. And when they go into the emergency room to get help, if they're not insured, they go in and say, hey, um, well, do you have this and that? And pretty much, um, obviously, if they get seen, they get charged for it. They get charged a Can't big, big a bill. Yep. Mm -hmm. And most most people work minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And it's just not affordable. Not even minimum wage is not even affordable for rent. Yeah. So what, what makes it affordable for health insurance? What makes it affordable for food? What makes it affordable for mm -hmm. clothing? Mm -hmm. for, for, for yourself? If you say you wanted to travel somewhere nicely, eat, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. Yeah. And that leads right into Jasmine Smith, who is mm -hmm. going to discuss income inequality, and it's a disastrous effect. And uh, what all of us are talking about, they're all interconnected. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they are. And, um, Everything that each one of my sisters have said really sat with me from personal experience. Um, and income inequality um, is mainly the reason behind all of the disastrous effects that we all spoke of, homelessness, the hospital beds, and um, the lack of hospital beds and so forth. Um, a lot of what we have to keep in mind is that there's a hierarchy in America. Mm -hmm. You know, America um, has a long history of inequality, um, and it's sh and it's shown in um, the financial instability of majority of the of the country. You know, like there's more rich. There's not. There's more poor than there's rich, mm -hmm. but the rich they have access to everything and you know I feel as though it's all politics too you know mm -hmm. at the same time um, basically I feel like putting the rich in power or it, it doesn't really support the whole country mm -hmm. um, it's not our fault for the inequality but it shows in us minorities the neglect that the hierarchy like shows. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're stuck paying higher for rent and groceries. Um, people are visibly struggling. Um, I'm from Springfield and the homeless rate is completely high. There's mm -hmm. so many homeless people on the streets throughout the city, whereas we would usually see them just downtown. Now they're uptown and mm -hmm. they're on the corner begging for change, and the numbers have just increased since the um, COVID-19, since the pandemic. Um, and there's just been more crime in the area, there's more guns on the street, there's more drugs on the street, and it's all because of just like the lack of income that, and the lack mm -hmm. of resources that people in the community have. Thankfully, I was blessed to receive a free education through BARD and have support of a great community of women, you know, but a lot of people out there don't have that or they don't have access or laptops or even, you know, just the mindset to break free from what's around them. So I feel like some of the solutions for income inequality really start with education. Um, it would also start with, you know, involving the rich in ways that you know, like they don't see what's going on out here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the DTA workers and the case workers, they don't see us, yeah. you know? So if, if people could just be more informed, I guess, and open up their mind, education would be important um, because also like the Republicans, they wanna stop certain education. In the South, they want to, you know, no longer provide black history, which is like, you know, absurd, you know what I mean? 
foundation of our country and the mm -hmm. building the foundation of our country yeah you know like they want to erase a lot of the history it's just it's just not it's just it's just not fair do you think it's by design or set up how do you feel about that um i feel as though it is by design for instance you know look at donald trump he receives no reparations for any of his actions you know they killed Martin Luther King and Malcolm X for less than mm -hmm. what Trump has done. You know, it's a design to either get power back, it's a design to maybe not redesign America, but, you know, everyone wants a label, everyone wants a title, everyone wants, you know, their right or whatever. And I don't blame them for that, but I just feel like when you start to knock down the next group or throw stones at the next, I feel like it's just not clean. Like, we can have a clean fight, but I just feel like when it comes to politics, it's never clean. So mm -hmm. will there ever be a solution? Like, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Oh, but one solution would be acknowledging the founders. You know, we deserve mm -hmm. our reparations. You know, mm -hmm. we deserve our land. You know, we can start there, and people might not like it, but, I mean, that's America. You know, America was built on inequality, so it's like, it is a design. It was designed before we had knowledge of it, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah, Sir. for sure. Definitely they built by labor. Of indigenous, indigenous people. Mm -hmm. They used our, our labor, they used our work, and, you know. And took credit for it. Yes, a lot yeah. of credit. Most, all of it. Jenny, yeah. It's just you putting power in the hands of the wrong people. You know, when you put power in the hands of the wrong people, the cycle, it recreates itself. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like, when do we change? Or when do we take the power and put it in our own hands? And we could, you know, that's also a solution for the income inequality. Like, you know, support black owned businesses or invest in yourself like we have done, and try to create your own lane or set your own self free, you know, but there's solutions for like these issues, but sometimes it takes more than yourself. You need the support mm -hmm. to, to find the solution. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, conversation starts. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think it's a lot of more like-minded people such as us like we mm -hmm. get together and just sit down and have a discussion mm -hmm. like this that we yeah. can figure out and find a solution mm -hmm. see what the problem is we're not being paid off mm -hmm. that's the problem yeah. we're doing this from our hearts yeah yes mm -hmm. there's no backdoor donors coming in here well all of you are a part of this solution because you have come together you've become sisters you uh, you have fought for your education and i mean i'm just honored that you were here and um, the power and the empowerment, and I know uh, your professor has been a leader in bringing that knowledge to you and will continue to. But you are on a path now that's unstoppable mm -hmm. because the door's been opened and you will not let anybody close it. Mm. I would be no, feel no, quite no. sure. No, nope. Mm -hmm. I think um, speaking specifically to solutions, right? Mm. Like you were speaking to systems of power right and the design of this country and my sister and I were having a conversation I love talking to my sister <laughs> um, and we were both laughing about this idea that we need to fix the system we need to fix it we need to fix it and it's like we need to fix it it's working exactly as it's supposed to mm -hmm. this is what we are all experiencing what we are witnessing what is happening around us mm -hmm. is precisely how it is supposed to mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. and the only, uh, I believe, the only real way that it's going to change in the ways that it needs to is for the system to be completely dismantled. Mm -hmm. Like the system, yep. you know, we can do what we're all doing. We can be better, mm -hmm. we can do better, we can encourage other people to be better and do better, but it's still within this bubble mm -hmm. that we all yeah. live in. And as long, until that bubble is popped, and that's that soap mixture is just like flush down the toilet mm -hmm. like we're just gonna keep 
recreating the same thing. Okay. And that's where we find like the satisfaction in what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have to, there's so much chaos in the world. The solution has to be within ourselves so that mm -hmm. we can be okay with what we have going on. You and know? bring that out to the forefront <laughs> and, yeah. and speak and go out into the public. Mm -hmm. And that's where <laughs> a Professor mm -hmm. comes in at. Yes. She's <laughs> always engaged in the public. Yeah. And I that's Please, Jenny. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, no, no. I will say sometimes I wish we got a little, b a little busy like the French do. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Yep, that's like, the 1960s. That's yeah. the era. I yeah, grew up. No, yeah. it's no. just like you know we look at it and we're like it's chaos. Yes. But they get things done. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the yes. City workers are like yes. we're not being paid enough. So guess what? You get to walk in garbage. Yep. Yes. You don't like it? Call yes. the people who can change it. Good day. Mm -hmm. That's the, the teachers. That's the civil yeah. rights era of the 60s yeah. no, and but the 70s. No, but now it's like Janaya is saying. The French get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Americans are dumbed. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just looking down. We're not engaging. We're not becoming more political. You know, they raised the, the um, retirement age in France to 60, 64. Is that Trying right? to raise it to 70. Yeah, or 60. 64. 64. 64. Uh, People were, you know, by the millions on the street, bird, fighting yeah. back, <laughs> burning, <laughs> burning the streets, you know? What are we doing? Because we can, you know, create a nice collective here mm -hmm. and do something. But are we really doing the, the work mm -hmm. of going out there, putting our body in the line, and that's the only thing it's going to take, you know? It's well, people it on the streets. If we consider that this is a corporate state, you know, that is ruling the United States together with the politicians, that's fascism. Let's mm -hmm. call the names. Yep. Okay? So what are we doing if we don't know that mm -hmm. fascism doesn't care about your education or your housing or your mental health or anything or how much you make? Mm -hmm. Do we need to be educated around those topics? Yes, Absolutely. yes. And we understand that there's censorship and there's a lot of stuff that is going on, and we should just have to give up. How is your dollar going to be invested? That was one, yes, of, the questions. one of the questions. Are we supporting the yeah. system that is suppressing us? No. Mm -hmm. We have to know where every dollar is going. But it isn't for me, not only being on the streets. These are lifetime commitments. And of course, one of the questions we have for you is, how do you feel about every dollar you spend in the community as a way to boycott any business, bank, corporation, or stores that are not caring for our communities to eliminate income inequality that keeps spreading wider and wider? And we've, we have a system that needs structural systemic change, but also when we look at young people, the dumbing down of our citizenry, citizenry is frightening. Mm -hmm. So we'll let each of you yeah. speak to that. Let's see. Well, you gotta, um, can't keep the dollar in the community when you have big corporations exactly. to, to go to. Mm -hmm. So you can't go to the mom and pop's pharmacy because you have CVS and Walgreens. I love mm -hmm. mom and pop pharmacies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They treat you like their own child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They do. But there's there's um, a lot of them in, P in Pennsylvania. Yes, there is. There's a lot of mom and pop <laughs> yes, there is. Um, pharmacies. And, but, you know, here it's not, and, and it's hard. It's hard to want to um, give back to the community stores um, when you do have the big corporations like CVS or mm -hmm. BJ's or, you Walgreens. know, Walgreens, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, but I... For me personally, you know, I'm quick to go to my bodega for some flour, you know, mm -hmm. oil or, you know, whatever it is versus, you know, the grocery store or something. Mm -hmm. I, I do support my community um, in any way that I can. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have kind of an unpopular opinion when mm -hmm. it comes to boycotting. Um, I'm not a big fan of boycotts mm -hmm. and it's because of the care and love that I have for my people and my community that I'm not a big fan of them. Like if Walmart Supercenter in Chicopee were to shut down, the number of people that would no longer have work mm -hmm. and would be out on the street mm -hmm. would be, I, I just like, I can't even wrap my head around that. Um, mm -hmm. I live in an area where there are no small stores for me to shop in. Mm -hmm. I don't have the choice except to go to Big Y 
to Stop and Shop, mm -hmm. to Walmart, and even, you know, I got EBT. Mm -hmm. Big Y and Stop and Shop literally cost too much. Absolutely. I can't shop there. I go there when I need something very, very quick, and it's one thing, and I can go in and out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the only choice I have, if I'm going to feed my family for the entire month, not just a part of it, but the mm -hmm. entire month yes, is to go shopping at Walmart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you the think that urban price, removal right? had a lot to do with it that killed our little downtown businesses? And what I'm talking Absolutely. about, talk, I'm talking about, yeah. now, I'm talking about using your money the best way you can to, su and I agree with everything you're saying, oh, you to, support, yeah. you to, to, to support your community. But this is also by design, I think. Yes. So mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, Jasmine, did you? Yay. Did you want to finish your comment? Um, and then Amy has the word. Um, I'm just piggybacking off of um, Jenea. Um, I do appreciate being able to support Walmart, and I mm -hmm. do appreciate being able to support um, the mom and pop stores as well. Mm -hmm. It is a double-edged sword. Um, yes. For sure. Yeah. And I also think it's the zip codes. I'm in the mm -hmm. south end of Springfield, and there's... It's, I call it a food desert. Mm -hmm. I don't have any, I have no grocery stores, only mm -hmm. Family Dollar, which mm -hmm. is outrageous now, mm -hmm. um, and McDonald's. And I don't mm -hmm. particularly want to mm -hmm. feed my children McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, so I do, like you, I, d I don't agree with, you know, corp, like spending all my money, all my hard earned money at a corporate office or a market, but that's the only place I can go. Okay, then the, the next I question would, is, yeah. is no. that by design? Yes, yes. it is. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 I would love to go to a so farmer's market. Yeah. I think it's interesting that we're talking about, you know, social justice and trying to be out there and how important free education is and free healthcare. Why don't we talk about Medicare for all, for instance? Mm. That would be another topic, you know? And, uh, and yet, by design, the system pushes us, like I said, to support the systems that oppress us. Yes, it's like Because these are big corporations. Yeah. They don't invest in our communities. No. Mm -hmm. They don't invest in them. And the people who work at Walmart are almost enslaved. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed mm -hmm. to take That's a correct. break, et cetera, yes, et cetera. But where are those jobs? If we keep investing in wars, Mm. hundreds of billions mm. of dollars, we, the poor people, low-income people, mm. are forced more and more into buying these corporations. What can we do? We need to increase our yes. wages. If mm. You know, increase our wages, I think, would help. Livable wage. Livable, livable wage, wage. Yeah. yes. A livable wage. Stop cutting trees. Yes, for instance. Yes, yes. yes. gratitude. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Blocking the nature by all of these buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you say, how can we, uh, can, how can we give when we, they don't give back. Yes. Absolutely. We work to put yes. the money in their pocket, but it doesn't stay there. No. We work Tax to the get the money mm -hmm. we, yeah. we need to spend. Yeah. We spend it. And when you have I a corporation, they, they suck up all the you know local businesses, the moms and pops, people, where we mm -hmm. would like to invest, mm -hmm. you know? Why should we normalize the dysfunction? That's what I, every, yes. every day I drive by, I'm like, why are we even normalizing this? Yes. I drove by. I don't know if I want to call out anybody's names, but I was in traffic the other day, and one of the officials in Springfield, I was right next to him, and um, there was a homeless man panhandling, and he just drove right by. Mm -hmm. And my son was like, did you see who was in the car? And I was like, yeah, I saw him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, do you have a dollar, mom? Because I need to give that guy some. Uh -oh. He's like, he's like the are? official. Yeah. A Springfield didn't. He just drove right by. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm certain yep. he did. Yep. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> um, and he's like, Mom. Love I, you. And my son was like, Mom, I bet you that's your only dollar until payday. I was like, He needs it more than we do right yeah. now, though. Yeah. So beautiful. It's like they norm like yeah. totally normalize this dysfunction, and I don't want to normalize it anymore. <laughs> There it is, there it is. I am going to, because we're coming towards the end, I would like each of you to make a final comment, and I would like to wind up with Professor Dr. Gloria Caballera to sum up, and then we just, I think, are going to have to continue this on another Absolutely. program. This is too, too important and in-depth, and we have just touched the surface. So Amy, I will let you, Amy Hendrickson, I will let you begin with a final comment. 
I just want to thank each and every one of you for coming out and wanting to talk about these important conversations. Um, we're all very mature women and um, mm -hmm. we have goals and we just want to see a better life for our future. And um, I cannot thank you guys enough. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would just like to say um, I appreciate being here with my sisters. I appreciate sharing this platform or having this platform by you, Rachel, to have mm -hmm. our voices heard. Um, I would like for the audience to continue to keep their mind open and to give grace to others that they might not usually be familiar with, mm -hmm. just to continue to grow their mind and expand compassion. Mm -hmm. Gratitude to everyone here. When you find yourself feeling stuck and trying to think of a solution, humor. Humor, humor is the WD-40 of healing. Mm -hmm. I want to leave everyone yep. with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. That's a nice yeah. one. Love it, sis. Yep. This is what she said. Um, it's <laughs> always sometimes hard for me to be serious because I'm always like goofy but um, I want to remind my audience too to always hug the people you love every day I don't even know what camera I wish I looked whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Jadea <laughs> Collins I love y'all I, oh, yes. oh, I love you all too, too. and um, chosen family as yeah. long as we don't stop speaking truth to power. Mm. Our men and our women. We gonna be all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A women to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. women. women. I like that. I like that. I like that. A, a women. women to that. This is and from. amen to men who support us. Men who support amen. us. <laughs> yes, yeah. Thank oh. you so much, Miss Rachel Branch. And thank you so much, wonderful students, graduates from Bart Micro College, leaders by nature and now more leadership back mm -hmm. to you back at you <laughs> for your communities your families who you represent and for who you are <laughs> this is a continued struggle mm -hmm. because we are human beings and we are living this is life and life is tough but you are mm -hmm. becoming tougher mm -hmm. you have that shield of light of hope of love of joy and humor and that mm -hmm. no one can take away from mm -hmm. you no. You are creators, you are goddesses, and you have to believe in it. Thank you God. have to believe in it. A women to you, Ashe. Thank you so woman. much. Yeah. I must um, <laughs> thank each and every one of you. Amy Hendrickson, thank you. Jasmine Smith, Leora Blanchard, Adriana, Adriana Torres, and Janea Collins. Mm -hmm. And I am truly honored and grateful that you would appear on Solutions Rising. And I think I've just added a bunch of new daughters, yes. chosen yes. daughters to my family that is continuing yes. to grow. Absolutely. So before we go, yeah, I, I, I would love to give each and every oh, one of you please, do. Uh, yeah. a bouquet of flowers. It's and my friend, my appreciation of love. And my friend and my sister <laughs> and a queen goddess. She is a Dr. queen. Dr. Gloria Caballero <laughs> Roca. I am her. just... Uh, Oh, this is just and wonderful. And congratulations on your graduation. Yes, thank you. um, thank you. Your journey is. Yes. And as I always say at the end of each of my programs. Yes, I'm crying inside. This is just <laughs> so <laughs> special. No you apologies allowed. No. <laughs> and if each one of us picked up one problem and solved it, imagine the incredible view we would all have of solutions rising. Each one of you are a solution, and you will be rising for the rest of your time in this space and beyond. And I love each and every one of you. I love you too. Thank too. you. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Rachel.